Celebrating 15 years of Young Turks. My name is Megha Vishwanath. You're watching Young Turks, India's longest running show on entrepreneurship. And for the next 30 minutes, I will be bringing you stories of startups, entrepreneurs and innovation right here from Israel. People prefer remembering over imagining and Israel was an imagination of an exile. These were the opening lines of the best-selling novel The Startup Nation by Dan Sinor and Paul Singer. One of the many books that have tried to capture this phenomenon of Israel's economic miracle powered by its startups. I start my week-long journey in Israel with not just an attempt to decode the spirit of this country but also to explore its future by stepping into the past. And the past of this country starts and lies in the sacred and scarred landscape of Jerusalem. Despite being the capital of Israel, even today the ownership of Jerusalem is disputed. But the pure energy around the holy city is overwhelming and I say this from experience as I walk the streets from the spice soak to the wailing wall which lies at the heart of the old city. But while Jerusalem embraces tradition and has history etched on every stone, just two hours away is an absolute contrast. What the locals call the non-stop city and the world calls the startup capital, Tel Aviv. Israel is a startup nation because Israel itself is a startup. After 2,000 years that the Jews came back to their homeland and literally made the desert bloom, we cannot stop innovating. It's the only way that we know how. And to hone their inherent skills, Tel Aviv now houses a school for entrepreneurship. We've been involved in entrepreneurship for some 22 years basically, but the idea for a standalone school, this is an idea that has been fermenting for some years. We are now at the Adelson School of Entrepreneurship, which has a series of programs going from undergraduate degree in entrepreneurship that will start next year, all the way through to our flagship program, IDC Beyond, which I head. In Israel, most young children are raised on the concept of shlichut, a mission. You have to live your life for something. You have to, to make your life matter. And we're used to service. Not just in the army, where everyone goes to serve their country, but also before. We volunteer. And that service has been bred into our DNA. Tel Aviv's status as an incubator for startups and an accelerator to foster technology makes us the choice of destination for not just early stage entrepreneurs but also tech giants like IBM, Google, Microsoft and Samsung to name a few. In an attempt to reinforce its position as a mecca for startups, this city hosts a week-long DLD Tel Aviv Innovation Festival every year. This year entrepreneurs and journalists from 32 countries flew in from across the globe. The theme for the festival this year was Women Entrepreneurship. So we kicked off the week by visiting Google's Tel Aviv campus which runs a one-of-its-kind program for working moms. As opposed to popular belief, maternity leaves can be pretty taxing for working mothers. One day, you're super busy and occupied with work and suddenly, all you're expected to think about are diapers. But in an attempt to make the most of this time, Google in Tel Aviv offers a program for young mothers to rethink their career and started a baby-friendly startup school for mothers called Campus for Moms. I'm an architect and interior designer. I had like uh, around 18 years of uh, experience in technology. I have uh, an older son and in my first maternity leave I was uh, going to this mom's courses, playing with the baby and I was a bit bored. I did like the idea of, you know, just doing nothing. I can't really go back to my old life and doing other things just because I'm expected to because I have a baby. Most of the people think that having a family and building a startup is impossible and I knew that it is possible but I needed other women that also believe and have this inspiration. 
Google for Mom is an idea that was started by you and you came up with this concept and pitched it to Google. What is it that Google has to offer? Do you provide them infrastructure? Do you provide them technology? Do you uh, help them network? We offer them everything, uh, a program for them to learn about their business plan, their product, their UX, their business model, everything that they really want to do. And Google has given them the opportunity to meet with other place people in, around the world and to actually show their ideas to professionals. You know, the, it was also a lesson for me for how to get help from other people. I think the, the most interesting experience was the, the demo day. I was presenting a demo in front of the audience and he was uh, one month or old or something like that. I actually left my job uh, two months ago and I'm working on my, uh, my startup. Yes, well, more power to these Israeli women, but doing us Indian proud are two Chandigarh based entrepreneurs, Komal Talwar and Moshini Acharya. And here's a look at their stories. I'm Komal, uh, I'm representing India here. My startup is called Excel Pad Labs, and we're basically the world's largest and the most intelligent technology database. So technology searching and analysis is very, very time consuming, it's very costly. The technology databases are scattered all over the world, they're in different languages. So that's the pain point we were trying to address, to make it more automated, to make it faster, to make it easier for users to use. What we've tried to do is, we've tried to license in all of the world's technology data from all over the world. It's about 100 million documents. So we work with a lot of top universities all over the world, including India. And what happens in those universities is that students have a lot of great ideas, right? And these are ideas that they want to take forward. They want to patent them. They want to kind of file uh, IP over it. So universities grapple with the issue of how do they test whether that idea is new or not. So for example, if you're looking for any ideas which are happening in the space of hiring a taxi through smartphones, you just put taxi hailing, smartphones, GPS, it gives you all the world's ideas which are related to that idea. And then the universities, the IP departments, the technology transfer departments can see whether it's actually worth filing IP in that or not. We didn't spend time gathering the data, we spent time on, on putting intelligence over it. I've had some very fruitful meetings at the DLD conference with investors and I really hope that you know we'll be able to go from here and take something back home. With over 1000 users who have already signed up on the platform, serial entrepreneur Komal Talwar claims that Excel Pack Labs is already in the green. So it was no surprise then when this intelligence database company won the DLD Tel Aviv Meet the Leaders Startup Challenge 2016. But it's not the end for India. We were the only country amongst the 32 participating ones to have not one, but two representatives at the event. It's now time to meet Moshini Acharya, founder and CEO of Advenio. I'm a PhD in computer science. I had a postdoc experience from UPenn uh, in medical image processing. I worked uh, in GE and Siemens in the healthcare domain. I was also di diagnosed as to be diabetic and I decided okay I have to like quit my job and come up with my own startup which will address this kind of problems. What Advenio essentially does is that it adds a layer of artificial intelligence and machine learning to diagnostic images of tuberculosis and retinal abnormalities. So Advenio's software can recognize a disease by simply looking at the image, thus aiding healthcare professionals with their diagnosis. So in the, in the smartphone uh, uh, device uh, sector, we are trying to solve other uh, diseases like skin cancer, oral cancer. And Team Advenio hopes to achieve this target in the next two to three years. Through the week, I continued my startup hunt and had the opportunity to chat with a few more finalists of Start Tel Aviv. My observation is that these finalists may come from different ethnicities and different time zones, but the one common thread between all of them is that they are all super powerful, here to stay and ready to lean in. I'm Shama Sukul Lee, founder and CEO of Sunfed Meat from New Zealand. I'm actually originally from the Fiji Islands um, and uh, I think I'm sixth generation Indian there. Meat is something that I personally kind of struggled with myself and I understood it's not as easy as giving it up. You actually need a true choice. Basically in a nutshell what we do is we make meat directly from plants. So we skip the animal in that high protein food chain. What meat is composed of is 75% water, 20% protein and 5% fats and carbohydrates. And it's made up of these proteins aligned in a certain structural way that gives it that 
bite and taste and texture that we really like. A lot of the meat replacements in the market have so much stuff in them that you don't want to eat because they're trying to make it similar to meat. So we're very different. We're the next generation of that sort of stuff. Um, so we are the first in the world to do what we're doing. We uh, basically developed this IP in New Zealand and uh, we've also filed a patent and we've got trademarks and trade secrets that are protecting our entire IP um, portfolio. So it's healthier for you, it's better for the environment, it's better for the animals and so we think it's a, it's a big win. I am Anika Salak. I am co-founder of Clean Sites from Estonia. I was a project manager, so I had to deal with workers every day. It was like firefighting all the time. And uh, now we have solutions to help people like me. This is an application for construction site management and team collaboration. Of course there's competition, but they are mainly focused main, like only for project management or only for the task management, but we are like trying to connect those, so you always have an overview of your big project, but then you also know what are the small tasks on the site. Construction company uh, pays uh, month over month, it's like 100 euros per project per month. Clean site is also used in Norway and in Finland, and actually we have a lot of people signed up from India as, uh, as well. In terms of development, I think for what we're doing, Israel is probably one of the best places in the world to do it in. Water doesn't produce water out of air. So what can investors back in India learn from investors in Israel? The trick is the partnership. In Israel, statistics show that for every dollar spent in the incubator program, mm -hmm. there's over six dollars of private funding. Celebrating 15 years of Young Turks.